So in this episode of Blackguard TV, we're working on a very special project for, for me anyway. It's going to be the first sword, full sword, forged out of the shop. And it's for a very special person who happens to be a member of my prior unit, 2nd Battalion, 7th Marines. So the request came from his platoon mates. They all got together and decided they wanted to do something special for this Marine. They wanted to do a pirate's cutlass. But they didn't just want to go buy an off-the-shelf cosplay pirate's cutlass. They wanted a handcrafted pirate's cutlass. So for this build, it being the first full-size functioning sword that I've made in the shop, I went ahead and contacted a few other blacksmiths, bladesmiths that I know to figure out the best way of going about this to yield the greatest result. So instead of forging out the whole sword blade from a single billet of steel, we're taking some flat stock steel, we're gonna cut out the principal profile for the blade, and then I'm gonna hand forge the bevels and the sweep into the blade. The steel for this project that we chose to use is a 1095 high carbon steel. So what I did here was I took the general measurements and profile and drew it in with Sharpie. From there, I'll take it to the engravers and I'll strike in my lines so that after I cut them out with the angle grinder, I'll be able to go to the KMG, the knife grinders, and true up my profile more precise. So once everything's struck in, we'll take it to the angle grinder and cut out the general profile. Now I like to give myself a little wiggle room outside the design, just in case I decide I need to make any changes or when I go to do the final profile setting, it's much easier to get everything through. Now that we have the blade cut out to rough shape and form, it's time to take it to the forge, heat it up, and start hammering in the bevels. Now what's gonna happen when I start hammering in the bevels for the edge is it's gonna cause the blade to want to start naturally sweeping the way that it's des designed on paper. So this tip will come back about an inch and a half and there'll be that gradual classic sweep of a cutlass. After we get the, the bevels forged into the blade, I will take it to the grinder, clean up the edges, true it up, and get it prepped to start putting in all the artwork. We're also going to be hand forging out the two-piece hand guard, which is the top hand guard and the knuckle guard. Now the reason why we're going with two-piece construction for this is because of the artwork and embellishments that we're putting into this piece. The top of the hand guard is designed with 2nd Battalion, 7th Marines, Echo Company, 1st Platoon Pirates. And then the knuckle guard itself will be a second ribbon of steel that comes out of the mouth of the skull and wraps down to form the knuckle guard. And there's going to be artwork and embellishments inside the knuckle guard itself. So for the ease of the process to make these and to get the best results, we decided to do it in two pieces instead of one. I also realized that I didn't have a quench tank big enough for the sword, so I had to improvise a new quench tank. Here is where I bevel in the edges and start to control the sweep before taking it to heat treat and take it to clinch. Hey everybody, welcome to day two of the Pirate Cutlass build. So yesterday, went in, hand forged the bevels, got the blade profiled to shape, got it ground, got it heat treated, and started to prep it for us to go in and do all the artwork. Now. I'm not happy with it. It's too thin. Didn't come out quite the way I wanted it to. So I ordered a new piece of steel. We're gonna go with the thicker metal. 
I'm not gonna make you guys watch me go through the exact same process all over again just to get the blade out to profile and ready. So today, we're gonna be working on the top plate of the handguard. Should be fun. So the top plate for the handguard is actually B2 tool steel. So I took my design transfer, roughed in the engraving, cut it out, took it to shaping to get it ready for dishing. Now we didn't dish this on the anvil, we dished it on an oak stump. This way it didn't thin out too much of the material. I did, however, have to go back to a couple spots and thin out the material on the anvil with a hardy tool. Once I got it to the shape that I wanted, I went through with the engravers and hardened in the rough artwork. I got it cleaned up and started to drill out the guide holes for me to cut out the hole in the mouth. All right, everybody, so what you just saw was me dishing out the top part of the handguard, going through, laying in all the principal artwork and engraving. Now you notice the mouth is open on the skull and the handguard. Now that is intentional because what we're gonna be doing is taking another piece of steel, welding it into place, shaping it for the knuckle guard, getting it all set. Then once it cools down, I'll go in and do all the artwork down the knuckle guard for it to be fit. The clip of steel for the knuckle guard was a little too wide, so I had to go in and make it a little bit thinner. Once I got it welded into place and straightened out, we throw it in the forge, heat it up, and start our bends. So once I finish up and get all the bends roughly where I need them right now, I'm going to take it to the grinder, shape in the profile that we desired, and put in the artwork. that I forged out had a few flaws I wasn't really happy with it it's not the quality in which I wanted to give the customer so I went ahead and ordered a new piece of steel a thicker gauge of steel went back through the whole process of, of beveling out the the edge getting it shaped and profiled getting it cleaned up to the same point that the last blade I had was at so what we'll do now is we'll enamel coat the entire blade I'll come in I'll draw in all the artwork and embellishments and I'll come back with the engravers. I'll engrave out the relief areas for all the artwork and leave the paint um, in all the negative space. Now what that's gonna do is when we go to acid etch, that paint's gonna act like a resist and not allow the acid to eat the metal there. Um, it'll only eat where I engraved, which is gonna help create a greater level of contrast behind the artwork. Using a variety of sanders and engraving tools, I then go in and grind out all the relief for the artwork. Once I get done grinding it out, I'm gonna clean it up and then set it in the ferric chloride dip tank. Now I need to drill the hole in the bottom of the guard as well as attach the threaded bolt to the bottom of the handle so that I can affix the pommel. Once we get the bolt to fix and everything's ready for lineup, then I take a piece of round stock, drill it, tap a hole, weld in a nut, and then shape that round stock into our final pommel. Most of this is done on the KMG belt grinders. I trace the profile of the handle and then carve out a channel for it. I then epoxy the two pieces of wood together and let them dry. Once I have a solid block of wood, I then take it to the grinders and start shaping the wood for the final handle profile. I'm going to do one more test fit to make sure everything fits together nice and snug. And we're going to wrap the, the wooden handle in leather and stain it black.
from here I have the final fit and finish of the sword completed. Now I need to make the sheath. So because of the drastic sweep in this blade, we can't do the traditional sheath. So we have to do somewhat of a hybrid sheath that has more of an open back. Once I get everything profiled out and all the pattern done, we glue it together, set the stitch holes and start stitching. Now that I have it all stitched together, I need to stain it and then place in the artwork. The very simple idea of design behind the artwork was at the request of the client. We then stain the whole sheath black and I go back in using again engravers and burrs and create more relief and more contrast in the artwork. Hey everybody, if you want to see more of our work, feel free to check us out on our Facebook page or our Instagram page. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us on this episode of Blackguard TV, the custom pirate cutlass build. Uh, sword performed beautifully, can't wait to send it to the customer. If you like this video and you want to see more, feel free to like and subscribe. And if you have any suggestions for our next build, Go ahead and drop it down in the comment section below.